In today's video, fans accused UFC and Kamzat Shemaev of fraud. 196. And of course, the main accusers are Ariel Helwani, an MMA guru, which caused heated debates on the internet. Also, Alexandre Topuria, Ilya Topuria's brother, not a fan of Ilya's plan, to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Holloway in the center of the octagon during the first 10 seconds of the fight. With the championship fight between Topuria and Holloway approaching, Fans are eager to see how this clash of styles will play out. Dana White answered a question about organizing a fight between Ilya Tapuria and Islam Makachev after UFC 308. Francis Ngannou went off on Dana White after his recent comments about him. Ngannou took Dana White's comments very personally. Recently, it has become clear that fans' questions to Merab Dvalishvili about when he will fight Umar Nurmagomedov or whether he is even willing to fight him have become very annoying. Where is this guy? Where he's taking fight? He's scared. He's fighting somebody else. But before we jump into the video, please take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks in advance. The official weigh-in ceremony for the UFC 308 tournament took place in Abu Dhabi. All the fighters successfully completed the procedure without any issues making weight for their respective categories. The only fighter who made fans and tournament organizers nervous was Chimaev. He stepped onto the scales at the last minute of the allotted time for weigh-ins and made the middleweight limit. Nevertheless, the Chechen fighter did not appear exhausted, energetically stepping onto the stage and leaving without assistance. However, there were still those who thought something was amiss. Controversy arose when the MMA guru posted on X, alleging that the scales were not given enough time to settle for Shemaev, raising doubts about the legitimacy of their weigh-ins. Guru even compared the situation to Khabib's weigh-in before his fight on UFC 254, suggesting a similarly dodgy scenario. It's hitting the bottom, what he gets on, it hits the top, so he slides it over, hits the top, slides it back down, hits the bottom, keeps hitting, doesn't stabilize, doesn't stabilize, starts to raise and then he immediately wipes it across and says the guy's made weight at 186 pounds. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, this absolute samurai! The MMA community's response has been split. Some, like Auredo, heavily criticized Guru, accusing him of bias, with one particularly harsh statement. Crazy how the fat called Guru just made up a lie about Kamzat just because he hates everyone from that region. Fans quickly took the opportunity to criticize Guru, echoing the sentiment that his analysis was more personal than professional. It's evident that these controversies continue to divide the fan base, with emotions running high on all sides. Even renowned MMA journalist Ariel Helwani weighed in, asking fans for their thoughts on Chimaev's body language during the weigh-in. Also, why don't they ever let the scale settle? Why move it so quickly every time? He wrote on X, further fueling the discussion. But what did Ariel Helwani mean? To me, it seemed that Chimaev didn't show much body language. He just stood there, tired and dehydrated. What else is a fighter supposed to do after not eating or drinking for so long? Jacob responded to Helwani, People always read way too much into weigh-ins and how fighters act when they're dehydrated and tired. I get caught up in it too sometimes. Another fan commented, Chimaev's body language was screaming either confidence or straight up chaos. Either way, it's gonna be wild. What do you personally think about this situation? Share your thoughts in the comments. It would be interesting to read. Bob is a good man, my just. Just respect the guy, you know. So if would some bad guy would be different, I'm that there as well. So was talking. Uh, if somebody talk bad to me, I talk back, you know. So if Very you're respectful, I respect respectful too. And also, he knows the strength of your wrestling. But he also said it's not a wrestling match. It's a mixed martial arts fight. He's not going to allow you to wrestle. What do you say to that? What I am doing then? And what I, are you doing? I am fighting you, Sima. So he's not wrestling. I know he's not wrestling. So I'm not here to just wrestle. How do you feel that your striking compares with Rob? Feels amazing. My one is there. I can knock up people out. So maybe it will be down with the knockout. We'll see. Ilya Tapuria and his challenger Max Holloway also successfully made weight without any issues. Interestingly, Tapuria arrived at the weigh-in alongside the renowned footballer Sergio Ramos, a moment that immediately caught everyone's attention. Even Alex Volkanovsky was seen interacting with famous football players. Yeah, <laughs> 
andaba. No te respondió nada, ¿verdad? Él lo sabe, ¿qué va a responder? Yo cuando se puso ahí a sacar mi culo, me tocó aplaudirme. Este, este, este honor, ¿no? De cuando sabes lo que, lo que te espera mañana y presentarte, estar ahí, se merece su respeto. As the highly anticipated championship bout between Toporia and Holloway draws near, fans are eager to see how this clash of styles will play out. MMA enthusiasts have been speculating on the outcome, and even lightweight star Dustin Poirier shared his prediction for this intriguing fight. Poirier is definitely a, a very technical and powerful boxer. He's always in position to fire big shots. Max has great technique as well. Um, kicks a lot, uses his knees, uses his legs. If he keeps that kicking distance, I think he's going to have success. But if he's pointing to the ground and, and they both oblige and they're in the pocket swinging, man, Tapori is fast and powerful with great technique, you know? Uh, I'm excited about this fight. It's a coin toss. I can't pick against Max, you know? I can definitely see Tapori winning, but just Max's experience and, and the championship fights he's been in. You know, Max isn't, even though he knocked Gaethje out with that one shot, uh, isn't the biggest, biggest puncher. You don't, we don't see him sitting guys down every fight. It's usually accuracy, timing, volume. Um, Will Ilya be able to keep that that tempo for five rounds? Because Max is a hard guy to put away. Ilya has the power to do it, but we've never seen it done to Max. And he's fought everybody, the biggest punchers, you know, in the UFC at that at those weights. My my bigger question is Ilya's cardio when it comes to that that much volume over five rounds. Because he's a guy who sits down in the pocket and puts guys away. If he can't put Max and he and he's getting off the stool third, fourth, fifth round, and Max is bouncing ready to come out and answer the bell every round will that wear on him this is a big test if he goes in there and, and beats max or or lasts with max in the volume game out points him out, out fights him technically on the feet dude that's gonna say so much about Ilya and and you know where he's gonna go dude moving on to the main event we got Ilya Taporia five foot four versus max the bmf holloway standing about five foot eleven he's gonna out fucking tower him it doesn't always mean you win should, but it doesn't apparently. How do I see this fight playing out? I think Max is gonna stand on the outside. I think he's gonna hit him with some long shots. Maybe, maybe you never, you never know. Uh, he's gonna do his little thing where he tries to get in on the side, get his little, and Max gonna pack him, pack him from the outside. I believe that fight could go to a decision. I think, uh, God, I don't know what I think. I hate trying to make predict prediction videos. I never really know what the fuck I'm gonna say. God, I think it's gonna be a decision. I think Max Holloway might, is gonna get the job done. Five round experience, weighing heavy on me. You know what I'm saying? So I think Max Holloway's gonna get the job done. Fuel C308 tomorrow. Drink right. Alexandre Tapuria, Ilya Tapuria's brother has voiced some concerns regarding the upcoming fight against Max Holloway. Specifically, he's not a fan of Elias' plan to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Holloway in the center of the octagon during the first 10 seconds of the fight. Ilias has been telling us all week he's going to start the fight by pointing to the center of the octagon and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Max. As his coach, <laughs> have you signed off on this, or is this just to get under Max's skin? No, I'm not agree with my brother, but <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. But you know, uh, any fighter like have his own mentality, his own decision he take uh, inside the octagon. So what can I do? You know, he says I want to fight like first and second, and we say okay. If you want to fight first and second, better you be prepared. So. We are very well prepared, not just for the first 10 seconds, but in every 10 seconds in every round. Yeah. Will he do it? Will he point? If he says he will. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, and that Don't you have to be sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if he says that he's gonna point the ground, he gonna, uh, you know, that's his personality. Ilya, for the fans back at home, what's your prediction for the main event? How do you see it going? Uh, I'm gonna knock him out in the first round. First round KO? Yeah. Now, you're gonna point to the spot? 100%. Once the fight will start, I will point to the ground and we'll see what, what, what he's gonna do. Hopefully, okay. he, he will stay in the middle with me and, and bang a little bit. I know what I'm able to do inside that octagon. I know about my power, my skills, my technique, my fight IQ. He's been saying that I don't have a fight IQ. Come on, I'm the world champion. You're the challenger. You have seven professional defeats. I have zero. What fight like you did, did did you show in 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 your defeats? So I always find a way to win. 
and you don't. So that means that I have more fight IQ than you. And I'm gonna prove it once again. He's he's good striker, but he's not good at in, in wrestling. He's not good in the ground. Walk has been saying no. If he's gonna try to take him down, he's gonna stand up quickly. Bro, this is the only thing you know to do in, in, in wrestling. Yeah, like he has a great chin. I don't want never ever to people to know me as the greatest chin in the UFC. That means that I take a you lot hit too of, much. Too much. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want the greatest fight in the UFC history because that means that I have a it was competitive. It, it was very competitive. I want to dominate people. I want to mold people. And this is what I'm going to do with Max. So I'm going to make him look easy. Dana White answered a question about organizing a fight between Ilya Tapuria and Islam Makachev after UFC 308. This is his first title defense. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Before we start talking about guys moving up to other weight classes, I love, I mean, when you look at Max Holloway, when he moved up, he had wiped yeah. out the entire division, right. best 145 pounder, you know, blah, 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 then Volkanovski, and there's plenty of challenges for him at 145. Francis Ngannou went off on Dana White after his recent comments about him. Ngannou took Dana White's comments very personally. What did you make of Francis's performance, given you know everything that's happened to him in his career—the two losses in boxing, the loss of his—it was better than Don Davis's, <laughs> way better. Um, listen, man, I think that I'm going to tell you what I think about what Fran Fran Francis is all about the money. Francis left because he knew that if he fought John Jones and didn't win, it would it would hurt his chances of making the money that he wanted to make. But realistically. His deal was bigger here. His deal was bigger here if he stayed in the UFC. I think I've told this story a million times. They can deny it all they want. Why the fuck would I lie? What do I, what do I care? It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Um, and uh, I was going to cut Francis when he lost two in a row. I was going to cut him. That was after the Derek Lewis? Yeah. Fight. Somebody around here begged me not to do it. And... Uh, you know, so it it, 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 uh, it it wouldn't have mattered to me one way or the other, you know. There's a much deeper story to this whole thing, and uh, he would have made more money if he stayed in the USA. I, I think Dana is trying to make things up to, like, buy a good face in the position that he has lost. Dana has lost this in this situation, and the only thing is that he can't understand it. Like, bro, I want everything. I left, like, it's been, what, two, almost two years? And the guy is still out there. He can't live without it. He can't handle me. Like, regardless of everything that uh, happened, I'm not about him. I, I went out there, did a fight, great fight for my son, memory. But the guy can stand. I don't know what is his problem, man. But, and he can make everything up as he want. That's his problem. He needs to make a peace with himself. You could have just said we couldn't, we didn't find an uh, agreement or something. We couldn't find it. Yeah, we couldn't come to a uh, deal. But uh, good luck to him. That's it. Good for him. And we continue our life. What's the problem here? You know, but I think the problem is that uh, he can handle this loss. He, he been praying for my, I, I'm sure he been praying for my downfall. Then I'm just keep doing my thing, rising. You know, since I left the UFC, in any senses, I'm more than what I was. And which money he's talking about? The money that he owes me? They say, oh, we're going to back pay you from the money that uh, we owe you from the Stipe and Syrian girl fight. All that, they never back pay me. Now I have made more money than I would have ever made in the UFC. I was I would say maybe twice the money that I could have ever made in my entire UFC career if I had continued in the UFC. I don't know. But either way, if I have made less money, if I'm not making less money, um, enough money that I could have made in the UFC, that would be my problem. Why is it so pissed about me not making that much money? Like, come on, man. <laughs> this is your life. Recently, it has become clear that fans' questions to Mirab about when he will fight Umar or whether he is even willing to fight him, have become very annoying. That the fight against Umar in December was too close, but you put out a tweet saying that you want to fight O'Malley in November. Does that mean you are scared? Let's boo to this guy. <laughs> Come on, are you scared of Umar? Where is this guy? Where he's taking fight? He's scared. He's fighting somebody else. Where is he? 
What is he? Tell me. What is he? He, he wants to get knocked down from somebody and then he's gonna make excuse. He's not gonna make this fight, okay? I'm not making fight. Then I and Hunter making decision who was not gonna fight next, okay? I don't make, I don't make decision. I never make decision, okay? If then I tell me I have to fight Umar, I'm fighting Umar, okay? But you know what? Umar don't deserve to fight me. Sean Amali deserves to fight me, and I'm gonna fight Rimachim, okay? He deserves, and after, Umar has to, he has to prove, and I will fight him. Is that Marab? Yeah, it is. Don't say anything stupid, he'll come and build the shit out of you. Marab, Sean Amali beat you! Shut the fuck up, shut up! Fix your nose! You're a fake champ! He's gonna kill us, shut up! Who said that? He said it, he said it. You said this? I didn't say anything! What do you say about me? He's coming, he's coming! He told your crotch, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. You say something about no, 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 me? I didn't say anything. <laughs> That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. We'd be very grateful.